today on Let's Go. What would you do if you saw some genuine proof of the existence of God? I mean, if you saw something that absolutely had no other explanation, and then you saw another one, and then another one. Welcome to Let's Go, where you will hear about lives that have been transformed by the power of God. You'll see and hear real stories of real people going to real places far away whose lives are changed as God uses them to impact the lives of others for His glory. Get ready to see people experience God's love and power. Let's go. Hi, I'm Pastor Tony Nardella, today's co-host for Let's Go. And our show today is for those of you who might never have seen a miracle before in Jesus' name. Or maybe you have, but you'd like to see another one. We have some guests today who just returned from a mission trip to South America. These are ordinary guys who took some vacation time to go tell people about Jesus. As they went, they saw some pretty incredible things, and they are going to tell us about them and show us on video what happened. Then you can judge for yourself if this is evidence, real evidence, that Jesus is God and the Son of God. We're also going to have a time of prayer for your needs and a short teaching. So let's go and take this journey together. Welcome back. We're going to talk now about some of that evidence I was referring to earlier. I have with me here today three young men that just came back from a trip to Ecuador. Uh, Johnny Lesoto is the team leader. Welcome back to the show, Johnny. Yeah, it's good to you. have you with us. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. And I also have with us Thomas Quinones and Jesse Houchins, who are also on this team. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I understand you had uh, quite an event down there. There was quite a few things that God showed up and did. But tell us what you were doing down there. Yeah, so the, the, the main reason why we go out there is because Christ called us. Um, he says to go out into the nations, preach the gospel, and baptize um, them who believe. And so uh, we go out there with that intention, knowing that God is before us. Um, and this specific area that we went to, Esmeraldas, um, we've gone previously. And so we've uh, we found that person of peace, right? Um, and they've uh, invited us back. So uh, this is a person that you created a relationship with on earlier trips, and he's welcomed you guys and the message of Jesus. Yeah. So cool. So he invited you back, and tell us a little bit about your activities there. You preach in churches, and what else? Yeah. So we uh, we pretty much we go out there and um, we, uh, we we meet up with certain people. Uh, we preach in churches, like you said. Um, we, uh, we go out into the streets, into the neighborhoods, into the communities, and door to door. Uh, we speak about Jesus to people, and um, the minute we start talking about Jesus, he shows up, so he does the rest. So, Johnny, when you say that Jesus shows up, I mean, give me an example of what that means. Yeah, there's just something about when you say the name Jesus, right? Uh, there's something about having a conversation with somebody and you could be simply talking about fishing. And the minute you talk about Jesus, there is a, a shift in the environment. There's a shift in the room. It's, it's almost as if his presence begins to just blow across and uh, the attention is all on him. And we give him the opportunity to do what he wants to do. So I know a couple of weeks ago, we all had dinner with the rest of the team. I think they had a total of about seven North Americans and another six Ecuadorians. Um, and God did a lot of things on this trip. So, Thomas, um, I heard a really incredible story at dinner a few weeks ago yeah. um, about a man who would, had been in a fight that you happened to stumble across while you were going door to door. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, we met up with this uh, this man. Uh, we were we were going and praying and inviting people to the meeting and asking people if they need prayer or healing for anything. And they led us to this one man. And they said he was sick. So we asked kind of what, what's going on with him. And they said, well, let's show you. And so they brought us to the man who was inside of this shack lying down on the floor and covered in blood and bloody blankets and all this stuff. And they had explained to us that he had just gotten to, into a fight that morning with, uh, with, two, with two locals um, because he was drunk and causing, a, and causing commotion and picking a fight. So they they beat him and they and then they hit him in the in the forehead across the forehead with a with a machete. With a machete. Yeah, 
and 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 it opened it opened his forehead and it was swollen and bleeding nonstop and I mean I've never seen anything like that before so immediately we're just praying and I really felt like the Lord uh, was wanting him not only to give over his life or to give his heart but to but to ask the Lord to rid him of that addiction to alcohol um, so once he regained consciousness we actually um, I led him in a prayer of, 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 of giving that life up, that, 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 the alcoholism. And, and, and then, um, so he did and gave his heart to the Lord. And we could see, you could see, uh, you could see when Jesus enters in to somebody's heart, when peace uh, supernaturally overwhelms somebody, you can actually see the physical manifestations of that. And at that moment, uh, my friend that was with me, uh, Jorge, was cleaning his wound because it just kept bleeding out. Um, and at that moment we prayed, we laid hands on the wound and commanded the blood to stop flowing in the name of Jesus. And uh, I kind of thought nothing of it. In that moment, I was just praying, you know, Lord, help us because the nearest hospital is two and a half hours away and it's closed. Um, and so as I was talking to the mother and the brother and Jorge said, hey, look, the blood has stopped flowing. And I looked and sure enough, the wound was wide open, but the blood had stopped flowing. And it kind of reminded us of, you know, the woman with the issue of blood and how she would reach out by faith. And the Bible says suddenly, immediately, the blood would stop flowing. Um, and so I just thought it was cool to see it, to read it and then to see it in action and personified. Yeah. But not only did the man get saved Correct. and renounce his addiction to alcohol, but he got healed because you asked the blood to stop for the, for the blood to stop flowing, yeah. but the cut was still there. Correct, wide open, yeah, and the blood would cease to flow. So it doesn't make sense, right? And that's what you were saying about supernaturally. We can't explain it, and we're not here to explain it, right? Jesus shows up on behalf of His name how He wants to, and well, does the miraculous. You know that is incredible evidence yeah. of that there is something bigger than what we understand naturally. There's not a doctor on this planet who could probably explain. say explain <laughs> why that happened at that exact moment. But we can explain it because the Word says that when we speak the name of Jesus, that people will be healed, their lives will be transformed. Jesse, I want to hear about a, one of the stories that you have to tell us about. Yeah, so for me, probably the most in, impactful part of the trip, we went to a city called East Lafayette, and it was like the ghetto, like the slums, uh, we heard it was a very drug infested uh, neighborhood. And for me, that's where I felt, I felt very comfortable. That's what God brought me out of. I was a drug addict and a drug dealer for 14 years. And uh, when we went back there, I just, I could, you could just feel the presence of like, not good things, not of God. And we started going door to door and just, we were having an event later that day. And just, we'd go knock on the door and say, hey, well, we're having an event this afternoon. Uh, we just wanna invite you to come. And I would kind of say, I was a drug addict and a drug dealer for 14 years. We're going to be sharing our testimony. Please come. And we went to several houses, but we went to this one house. And this younger girl answered the door. And I said, hey, we're having this event this afternoon. And you could just see the, the, the despair on her face. And mm -hmm. I just said, uh, I used to be a drug addict and a drug dealer. And once I said that, she just started weeping. And I, I, we asked if we could come into her house and she was just crying uncontrollably. And you could just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, just fill the house. And uh, I shared a little bit of my story with her and like our stories lined up like perfectly. And we were able to pray for her and just invite her to the event. Uh, she was telling us that her, her boyfriend was beating her and she couldn't stop doing the drugs, even though she wanted to stop. And she did come to the event later that afternoon and gave her heart to the Lord. Uh, but it was just encouraging just to, uh, God pulled me out of a mess. He pulled me out of such darkness. And that's where I feel like God has called me back into to go back into the darkness to, to help people be set free through Jesus. I am so impressed that wow. just walking in the room was enough to cause the Holy Spirit to fall on this woman. Hearing your testimony of being delivered from drugs, which obviously she was dealing with, was enough to get her free as well. Uh, and then to give her life to the Lord, and that there were other family members there as well that uh, heard the message? Yeah, her son was there, uh, and she was. She felt kind of ashamed to say, my husband or my boyfriend's beating me, 
uh, in front of him, I could tell, but she, you could tell she was at her end and she didn't care who heard. She was just ready to get set free. Praise the Lord. Now, Johnny, um, God's always showing up around your teams, but I know you told me a story about a man with uh, legs that weren't quite right. Could you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah, so where this happened was in, in the same place that, uh, that Thomas here uh, encountered the man that had uh, the gash across his face with, uh, with a machete. Um, Thomas was leading the meeting that evening, um, and so we were gathering in front of this guy's uh, front yard, um, who just so happened to be a man um, that last year when we went into this neighborhood, um, he was touched by God and his whole family um, gave their life to Christ because they saw the miracle happen in his life. And so he opened up his home for us to share the word and invite the whole community there. Um, and so while we were there, um, Thomas finishes uh, the, the, the word that he was giving. Um, and I noticed this man uh, one was walking forward or with the help of others uh, because uh, Thomas had asked, uh, had called for, for, for prayer on healing. Um, a large crowd gathered and this man was, was, was being helped over. Um, and I immediately focused in on him and um, noticed that he was walking with, uh, with, his, with his knees planted inwards. Um, and he had to sit down on a little bench that was right there. And so I go over to him and I ask him, what's, what's wrong? Uh, what does he need prayer for? Um, obviously, I saw that, you know, his legs weren't right, but he told me he, he's just been like this his whole life. And so uh, I, I, I had him I had him stretch out his legs. I, I just wanted to see because I noticed one of his knees were really bent inwards. Um, and so as he stretched out his legs, you can see one of his legs were, were significantly longer than the other. And so right there, I just began to pray and I, and I began to walk him through it. Um, and, and how Jesus today still heals and he's a miracle worker. He's alive today. Um, and I literally just said, right leg grow. And all of a sudden you just see the leg grow out a little bit. And then I said it again and it grew out a little bit more. So at that moment when his leg, uh, grew out, um, evenly with his other leg, uh, there was other people that were surrounded around us watching. Um, and they, they noticed and they saw that his leg grew out. So their eyes just widened. Um, and, uh, and I asked him to stand up and do something he hasn't done before. He began to walk in a circle. He began to jump up and down. He began to lift up his legs one by one. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. You see, the moment that you begin to talk about Jesus, the moment you lift him up, mm -hmm. he begins to take over the room. He begins to take over the atmosphere in which you're, you're in. Um, and that's what happened with the people that were around. You so so they they came because there was nothing else for them to do, and they came with high expectation, right? Um, and when you come with that type of expectation, that's where the Lord will begin to use uh, whoever to show Himself to glorify Himself, especially when you talk about Him, yeah. right? In its simplest form, and so uh, and so that's what we saw. We saw we saw Him move in mighty ways and. Uh, it caused a curiosity in, in the people that were seeing and witnessing what had just happened. How did that fellow react? I mean, I presume that he was totally healed and he could walk. Yeah, he, uh, I, he began to cry. You can see the teardrops coming down his eye. Um, I, I'm guessing there were some family members that were next to him too. I saw them begin to cry. Uh, but they, it, was, uh, it wasn't a cry out of, uh, out of, out of uh, fear or any type of thing like that or depression. It was a joyful cry. It was, a, it was a cry that uh, the Holy Spirit began to, to just touch his life um, that, uh, that just drew him closer. Now, when you talked to him later, did, had he ever been able to walk before? From my understanding, he said he's been like that his whole life. Uh, he's always needed somebody to help him, some sort of assistance with a cane or somebody to walk with. And, but you saw him walk without assistance? Yes. But Johnny, thank you for sharing that testimony. And my friends who are watching, these were three incredible supernatural testimonies, things that cannot be explained naturally. So that's why we call them supernatural. And they can't be explained scientifically, but they can be explained by listening and reading God's word and knowing what he's telling us. He told us that if we would invoke his name, the name of Jesus, that people's lives would be changed and healed and made better. And that's what you just heard. So. That is evidence for the existence of God. Guys, thanks for coming today and sharing your evidence with us, and God bless you.
So what did you think of those testimonies? What incredible stories of the love and power of our God. We want to invite you to stick with us now as we go to a time of prayer where that same love and power will be available for you. So come on, let's pray together. We are so glad that you decided to join us for prayer today. This is such a perfect episode for our prayer segment as we're talking about miracles. And I have my friend Sarah here again today. Sarah, thank you for being here. Hi, Brittany. Happy to be here. I am so excited for today's prayer. I was just speaking with my husband last night and I said, what do you think life would look like if we really believed God was able to do what he says he's able to do? And we just both got so excited thinking about how we should really be praying. Yeah. And I know this week on the prayer line, you had a lot of people mm -hmm. call in and yeah. they're expecting miracles. <laughs> they're expecting God to move. So would you mind starting us off by praying for those who called in this week? Yeah, absolutely, because we believe God is moving, right? So let's pray for that. So uh, a couple people come to mind. Norma called. Uh, she asked for prayer for her sciatic nerve, mm -hmm. as well as um, prayer for her brother Edwin, who's uh, been paralyzed in bed for the past year. And we believe that God can and will heal you right now in the name of Jesus. So we just release the healing power of God. We plead the blood of Jesus over Edwin right now. And we say like how Peter and Paul would say to people all the time that we're lame and that we're paralyzed, rise up and walk. We thank you, Lord, that you are healing Edwin from the top of his head to the soles of his feet in the name of Jesus. And we pray for Norma and her sciatic nerve. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over Norma right now. We command that sciatic nerve to align to the word of God, to be in complete alignment with the word of God in Jesus name. And the word says that you are healed, Norma. So we thank you, Lord, that your healing power is being released over Norma right now, that all the pain is going and that Lord, you are doing a, just a complete complete healing. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that there is no miracle that is too big or too small for you, that you do it all because you love us so much. Lord, we just give you all the glory and the honor for the, the healing work that you're doing in Norma and Edmund today. Amen. Amen. And yeah, I know that there's definitely people watching today who are thinking, I didn't call in this week, but yeah. I'm really sick and I need a healing in my body as well. So if yeah. that is you and you have any kind of sickness, listen, the name of Jesus is greater than the name of any illness that the doctor has spoken over mm -hmm. you. So anywhere in your body where you feel sickness or disease has been spoken over you, I want you to place your hands on that part of your body right now. And we are believing that the very Jesus mm -hmm. we are praying to is going to come and meet you right where you are. And he is going to touch you right now. So I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, may healing through the blood of Jesus be released upon you right now. Now we pray this with the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Is there anything else on your heart that you want to pray for today? God is so good. He is so <laughs> faithful. I think that's a great place for us to end. And listen, if you have prayer requests on your heart, we want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Call the number on your screen right now. Don't do life alone. Don't hide what it is you're struggling with. Call us. We want to pray with you. We want to believe God for a miracle in your life today. So call us this week, okay? And listen, there is a lot more show to come, so stick around. Does God exist? If He existed, how would we know? What kind of evidence is out there that would lead anybody who's not a believer to believe that He is real? Many people say you have to have faith to believe in God, that faith is a mystery. Faith is defined in one place as belief based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Or in other words, that faith is simply belief without evidence. But is that really true? Is there no evidence for what we believe? I know that many of us who grew up as Christians, while well, we took things by faith, 
Many of us never really saw any evidence that God exists. We even celebrated the lack of real evidence when we sang in Sunday school, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We quote phrases like, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. But is it possible that we have sold God just a little bit short? Could it be that there is visible evidence that God wants us to see? Could it be that God has given us evidence of his existence to help us believe he is there and that he is as good as we hope he is? Evidence so strong that if you saw it, it would change your life? I say yes. God's pattern has always been to confirm his word with signs and wonders. For example, in the four gospels, we see that Jesus performed many signs and miracles, thousands of them really. What was the purpose of these miracles? When Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, it says this, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. When they saw Jesus, it made the people rejoice and praise God for the miracles they had seen him do. As a result, they rightly concluded that Jesus is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. So we see that miracles cause us to recognize Jesus as King and to worship him. Or how about the time when the disciples were in hiding after Jesus died? All of a sudden, Jesus showed up in their room, even though all the doors were locked and he didn't have a key. He then showed them the wounds he suffered on the cross, which were evidence of his death just three days earlier. But here he was, alive. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So again we see that the miracle of the resurrection and of his victory over death brought great joy to the disciples. Now about these miracles, the Bible says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. It's not all the writings in the Bible that this scripture is referring to. It's referring to the miraculous signs and wonders in the Bible, like a dead man walking and talking and walking through walls. It says that the testimonies of these miracles were written down so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that you can have new life in his name. This is why miracles happen, so that all may believe that Jesus is Lord and receive his great salvation. So yes, we have evidence, strong evidence, that God exists. He sent his son Jesus to earth to perform these miracles, to show the world that he really is real and that our hope in heaven is not just a religious fantasy. And he sends his servants today, the same way he sent Jesus, to work the same miracles in his name so that our neighbors and family members and friends can also have the joy of knowing that there is a God who loves them and is working all things out for the benefit of those who love him back. So there is evidence of the existence of God. Trust God to do miracles around you and then get out there and tell everybody what you have seen and heard and God will be with you. We have heard so many things today that really stick in our heart as evidence, actually miracles as evidence of not just the existence of God, but his continued activity. Tony, the Holy Spirit, when he comes in us, he is the one who amasses the evidence of the goodness of God just flowing out of your life. You've seen that time and time again in many, many nations where somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit takes that step of trust and God works through them. As I listen to those testimonies, Pat, I, I mean, I just have to agree. God used these men in a powerful way um, and it's, I believe that's what he wants to do with all of us, not just the 
um, the pastors and the ministers or the TV people. I mean, he just wants to use everybody. And Jesus said that these signs will follow them that believe. You know, they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll drive out demons with just a word, the name of Jesus. And it was, uh, these signs will follow those who believe not just the pastors or the clergy or whatever, but common people. Absolutely. Well, and I love this scripture where Jesus looks at Martha and he says, did I not tell you you would see my glory if you would only believe? So not just that we would believe it's maybe possible, but we just throw doubt away and we really lean into faith. And then we let we step out and we let the Lord show himself faithful. All right, so it's not just about what we're reading in the word, but what we're following through as a disciple of him. Absolutely. I mean, we I think everybody would agree, like no matter your denomination, that we want to follow after Jesus. We want to follow what he did. We want to do what he said. You know, he says that he followed only what he saw the father doing most of his time was spent performing miracles. So if we're going to do what Jesus did, miracles should be a part of our everyday life. Well, that's right. You know, Acts 10, 38 says that we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth who went around the land of Israel doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. If I want to be like Jesus, and I do, and if you want to be like Jesus, we have to ask God for the grace and the faith to step out and do what he did. Jesus told the disciples before he uh, was ascended into heaven, after his resurrection, he says, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. The Father sent Jesus with miracle working power to create evidence so that people wouldn't have to believe in just a religious fairy tale, but to believe in the reality of a creator who far transcends any understanding that we have. But we can see it with our eyes and we can know that there is a God that loves us, gives me hope. Mm -hmm. It does give hope. I, I tell you one of the things that today it seems like we focus a lot, and we should, on salvations. But really we were called to go and make disciples, not just converts. True. And a disciple of Jesus does what Jesus did. To your point earlier, Brittany, it is something that we see what the master is doing and we go and do likewise. And so if he lays hands on the sick, we should lay hands on, our, on the sick. That's part of the commission in the Mark 16. So we increase then the amount of evidence that God is real by obeying him as good disciples. You know, go and teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. And so in that way, uh, God's glory just extends further and faith increases. Well, that's right, Tony. So we would like to encourage you to consider what the Lord would have you do to be a miracle working disciple. What a powerful time we've had today. Those three testimonies, the one with the guy who got the machete across the face and the bleeding stopped, uh, the one with the girl getting set free from drugs just when a guy walks in the room and the guy who couldn't walk before his entire life and now he's walking, those are just incredible. And I would submit them to you as evidence that Jesus is real. And I want you to consider, not that it's absolute proof, but it is strong evidence that Jesus is God and the Son of God. We look forward to seeing you next time on Let's Go.